five minutes. Please wait for a moment and be seated. For online participants, please wait for a moment. Also, there is an announcement. You may receive the QR code when you enter this room. This is for the satisfactory survey to measure the level of satisfaction of this event. It will be highly appreciated if you do the survey after the event. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Hyun Kim from Korea Development Institute. I'm a project officer of this project, KSP project with Indonesia. It is my honor to host this final reporting seminar for 2021-22 KSP with Indonesia. From now on, I'd like to begin today's seminar. The objective of today's event are to present final research findings and discuss how to reflect the KSP outcomes to Indonesian audit policy. It would be great if you could share the ideas and potential impact of this project. Before we begin presentation session, I would like to request Dr. Jin to give opening remarks. Dr. Yonggun Jin, former Audit Committee of Board of Audit and Inspection of Korea, is senior advisor of this project. Dr. Jin, the floor is yours. Dear Mr. Dadan Kurnia, uh, the former chairperson of DPKP, dear Mr. Ingwon Oh, the first secretary of the Korean Embassy in the Republic of Indonesia, and dear colleagues from Indonesia and Korea. Good afternoon and Salamit Siang. The warmest of welcomes to all of you. I'm so delighted to receive you here at the final reporting seminar of the 2021 to 22 knowledge sharing program with the Republic of Indonesia. My sincere thanks go to the Ministry of Economy and Finance of Korea, DPKP, and Korea Development Institute for their wonderful preparation for this meaningful event. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize the presence of the Korean Embassy in the Republic of Korea, uh, Indonesia. The Embassy has successfully built a partnership between the two countries for decades. I'd like to thank the Embassy for its endeavor who establish great relations between the two countries. Information communication technology enables countries to leapfrog stages of development and rapidly integrate into the global economy. These days, every sector of the economy is being digitalized. 
the Indonesian government is also implementing various strategic projects related to ICT. This is to accelerate economic development. Even though COVID-19 has negatively affected most sectors of the economy, the ICT industry has grown. The usage of digital technology, including e-learning, e-payment, e-government, etc., is increasing. At the same time, Indonesia's digital roadmap from 2021 to 2024 is accelerating the country's digital transformation agenda. As you know, the four strategic sectors are digital infrastructure, digital government, digital economy, and digital society. Especially for digital government, Indonesia is in the process of consolidating and integrating various government data under the One Data Indonesia initiative. By creating quality and accessible data that can be shared across the central and the regional agencies, there is no doubt that this policy could improve government services. Of course, there have been arguments on the effect of digital transformation. However, as a former commissioner of the Board of Audit and Inspection of Korea, I must say that e-government using digital technology could help the government to support people efficiently in a more transparent way. For example, ICT enabled BAI to operate system audits. The system audit, compared to the traditional one, is more comprehensive, supportive, and cooperative. In this historical flow and based on the development in digital technologies, this 2021 to 22 KSP project with Indonesia launched last year. The researchers of both countries have struggled to analyze the two countries, environments, systems, laws, and regulations. As a result, today, applicable policy implications to improve the EOD system in Indonesia will be presented. I sincerely hope that the outcome of this project could contribute to the development of EOD systems in Indonesia. Today's seminar aims to present a final research results. For the last nine months after the launching seminar, we have conducted research with the help of the experts within the BPKT and three local consultants. This year is seen improvement of supervisory methods on utilizing information and technology, EOD case in Indonesia. It's designed to help Indonesia upgrade its OD system. With the help of Indonesian colleagues, we could make the progress regarding the following three topics. The first topic is the search on data necessary for audit activity. In relevant government institutions, these topics will be presented by Professor Liu from Yonsei University. The second topic is comparative analysis and evaluation between BPKP's audit systems and Korea's electronic audit systems. Mr. Isaac Kim from Nikon Company will present his final research findings. Our last topic is enhancing SIMDAS data sharing and auditing function. 
This topic will be presented by Professor Ji Ho Chang from Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Please feel free to share your insights and knowledge today. I kindly request all the audience to actively share insights and opinions. It would be very helpful in implementing the project outcome in the real audit. The policy recommendations can only become alive when it becomes a policy. The Ministry of Economy and Finance of Korea and the KDI will spare no efforts in making the aspiration of our DPKP colleagues into reality. Thus, I hope every participant here to consider today not as the end of our journey, but as the beginning of something greater. Thank you all again for coming together and taking time out of your busy schedule. I wish you lively discussions. Ladies and gentlemen, then now I'd like to announce the opening of the final reporting seminar. Thank you. And Prima Hashi. Thank you, Dr. Jin. Next, we would like to hear the welcoming remarks from Mr. Dada Kurnia, Prime Assessor Experts of Human Resources, BPKP. Mr. Dada, please give your welcome remarks. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Anyong Haseo. The Honorable Dr. Yong Kon Chin, uh, as a, currently as a Senior Advisor, Knowledge Sharing Program 2021-2022. And also, uh, I want to greet Mr. Oh Hung Kwon from Korean Embassy in Indonesia. And I believe that your presence here in this occasion is really representing the good relationship between Indonesia and Korea. Dr. Hyung Dog Kwon, the Director of the Division of Policy Consultation of Korean Development Institute. Dr. Sang Yu Ryu and Mr. Isaac Kim, who will join us through video conference. And also Ms. Soo Yeon Kim and Ms. Do Yi Kim, the Research Associate of KDI as the project officer of this program. And also I want to greet all the rectors from all deputies who are present here physically and online through Zoom meeting. Uh, on also the cent uh, head of centers, head of bureaus representing the prime secretariat. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank you for the opportunity to cooperate again in KSP 2021-2022. This is our second time to do joint research after the KSP 2018-2019. And I hope this cooperation would be continuously uh, continued and then for the next upcoming years. And uh, also I want to welcome to Jakarta, Dr. Chin, that you told us that this is the first time you visit Indonesia, but unfortunately tonight he, will, he must go back to Korea again. So maybe Dr. Kwon, maybe you can arrange another meeting here <laughs> to invite Dr. Chin to visit more Indonesia <laughs> in another occasion. And I hope uh, you and all KDI delegation is enjoying Jakarta, especially. And we have gradually back to normal, actually. Uh, you can see that uh, many traffic congestion is being there now, currently. 
then more, more people doing activity outside uh, unlike uh, the past two years. So however, we are still implemented health and safety protocol and uh, uh, we manage the risk of COVID-19 because uh, there is some, our friends also has been contacted <laughs> with the virus currently. Dr. Kwon, uh, I address you specifically because you are my old friend. <laughs> I used to call you my old friend. Uh, thank you for visiting us again. We are glad that you have KDI delegation here. Even you perform in, the, in this library cafe in the last visit. So if we want to perform again, you sing again, we have prepared the band here now. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from this joint research, we actually want to learn the knowledge and better practices from Korea in developing e-audio systems to enhance supervisory function as our, as our main function. Therefore, we need the research on data necessary that could give us focus on the key control activities and supervisory method evaluation that comparable to practices in Korea. This lesson enables us to create better design to develop the audit system. Of course, uh, we might not adopt 100%, but we must adapt, make adaptation in, uh, in terms of Indonesian situation. Ministry of Finance uh, has just released a statement that shows at least there are 24,000 applications used by the government institution throughout Indonesia nowadays. So you can imagine how inefficient then can lead to inefficiency if this application could not be integrated. Therefore, integration of the system is our main goals right now and our main concern. And I hope that could be facilitated maybe some insight from this project uh, further on. Through this research, we can get not only knowledge and better practice from Korea, but also opportunity to know ourselves better, know how to write also, how to give us a chance to publish an article about the situation, about the data that we have gathered from interview, from some inspectorates, from ministries and local governments, and also from local government itself as the users of financial management information system that we have developed. So this means so much for us. And I want to thank to Pak Edi Mulia and the team from SIMDA Tax Force that has been very resilient in developing FMIS, which is the extended or the current version of the SIMDA that allowed us to integrate actually planning, financial, and performance data with other systems created by ministries and even banks. So FMIS have been serving uh, almost 400 local governments from 542 local governments in Indonesia, and I think the number is uh, even larger now. Paidi Mulia is uh, also the leader of the program as program director and maybe uh, allow me to inform the audience that actually BPKP and the Ministry of Home Affairs has uh, concluded some agreement that we will develop together. So maybe the name will, will be the new one, but we develop together. So I think the one that uh, the situation that be required by the uh, what from the suggestion from the recommendation of Professor uh, Dr. Yu has been there now. I believe that it will need some time to develop, but I believe that uh, it is a positive uh, was it a development of the current status. And thank you also for le let me call you local consultants, <laughs> Dr. Dwi Swanto, Sofia Mahadidin Tias, and Rudy Hanasri for your uh, really good work. 
and uh, implementing our research design and also finding a better solution for to improve our uh, research program. We are glad uh, to finalize KSP 21-22 joint research and we hope that our cooperation is long lasting and also strengthen cooperation between the two countries, Indonesia and Korea. Thank you very much. Kam Samida. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Tata, for your encouraging word. Also, today we have a special guest from Embassy of Korea in the Republic of Indonesia. Mr. Ohun Gon, First Secretary of Korean Embassy, is with us today. Give congratulatory remarks. Please welcome me with applause. Yeah. Selamat sore. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Oh Hung Kwan. I uh, I'm working in Korean Embassy as a tax and finance attaché. Uh, so I'm gonna speak to you today. Okay. Thank you, uh, dear Mr. Tatang Kurnia, the prime assessor expert of human resources. Dear Dr. Yang Gun Jin, the former audit committee of the Board of Audit and Inspection. And dear guests from Bebe Cafe and KDI. At the outset, I'd like to express my gratitude to the KDI and Bebe Cafe for inviting me to this important event. They have done excellent work in preparing for this you can imagine the difficulty in arranging an event like this in the midst of COVID-19. Also, my warm welcome and sincere thanks go to all the participants who are with us today out of their busy schedules. It, it feels like yesterday that I attended the launching seminar of this project last December I participated in the launching seminar virtually at that time, but it was long enough to see the great potential of the project. And now for this final reporting seminar, I'm glad that I could attend this offline event and could see the final output of this project. As far as I know, the knowledge sharing program aims to share knowledge with partner countries and develop a solid foundation for the expansion of economic and political cooperation. In each name, the most important word would be sharing. By attending seminars, I could witness how experts from Korea and Bebe Cafe have shared their knowledge and transformed lively discussions into sophisticated policy recommendations. I firmly believe that this project, improvement of a supervisory method on utilizing information and technology e-audit case in Indonesia, would support Pepecape to build transparent and effective governance in the field of e-audit. Next year, marked the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Korea and Indonesia. I look forward to seeing more KSP projects that could significantly bolster two relations in the coming years. Kamsamida and terima kasih. Thank you, Mr. Kwan, for your kind words. Please give our speakers big applause. And before we start presentation session, I would like to invite you all to the in front of the room for the group photo. Please be here.
thank you all. Then let me move on to the presentation session. In today's seminar, Korean experts will present their final research findings. This session will be led by Dr. Kyung Dok Kwon, the project manager of 2021-22 with Indonesia and the director of the Division of Policy Consultation, CID KDI. Thank you, Sion. Yes, I'm first manager for the case with the Indonesia 2122 and the case with the DPKP. Uh, first of all, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Chang, who is a principal investigator, is appointed president of the Cyber University of Foreign Studies in the morning. I take this opportunity to convey my sincere congratulations to him. And uh, Isaac Kim, he is in charge of the topic two. But last week he was uh, hospitalized. But I think he is recovered. I'm very happy to see. And uh, he, uh, he is with, uh, with us at the moment. There's three of, the, three of them, but only um, Professor Sang Yap Yu from Wednesday uh, University is present here. Uh, thank you very much for your coming with us. Uh, the first topic is uh, respons responsible for, uh, Yu Sang Yap is responsible for the first topic, and he will make a delivery in direct tracking. And then uh, topic two uh, is done by Isaac Kim. Is a make a presentation in virtual space. Are you okay, Isaac Kim? Okay. And then for the last topic uh, done by Professor Chang, we bring a video clip for the, his presentation. And okay, this a uh, move to uh, south topic number one. And let me invite uh, Professor Sang Yap Yu. There's a presentation. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sang Yap Ryu from Yonsei University, and I'm very glad to uh, present my final uh, research outcome in front of uh, very respected uh, officials from DPKP and other institutions. Oh, can you hear me? No? Uh, the audience online, can you hear me? <laughs> you're, you're not online, so it seems it seems eight persons. Are they are you okay? Okay, good. So uh, my research uh, topic, my research topic is written on the slide, but basically uh, my work with uh, Dr. Kiswanto was about how to implement more practically Chengbeng Ni system, which was introduced. Uh, uh, in 2018-2019 project by KDI. So next slide, please. So this is the contents of today's uh, presentation. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please. Uh, so here is the research proposed. Uh, well, here I don't want to repeat the definition of corruption and the importance of corruption management. But it, one thing is for sure that uh, the current status of Indonesia is lowerly ranked uh, in terms of corruption, uh, research by uh, Transparency International. And corruption affects a lot of uh, social or economic side of the government and society. Therefore, it is important to manage uh, corruption and our present, my presentation and my research 
will be how to improve uh, manage uh, corruption through e audit system. Next, please. So, as I said, this is the expansion uh, extension of 2018 research on uh, Chongbeng NIST system, and the focus of uh, the current research is on uh, developing uh, scenarios which needs to be equipped with uh, Chongbeng NIST system. Next, please. So, next, without. This is the literature view and the current status of uh, Indonesian corruption. Uh, as I already explained in the introduction, uh, uh, the current Indonesia government needs uh, special attention to corruption management. And I see that uh, not only BPKP, but also local uh, auditors and local bureaucrats from provincial governments find that uh, they want to manage corruption and they want to uh, manage corruption through e audit system. So it is very uh, a good sign that uh, Indonesian government and bureaucrats are ready to manage corruption. Next, please. So this is the statistics of uh, current status of uh, Indonesian corruption. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the most uh, corrupted part of the Indonesian government is bribery, uh, followed by procurement. And as I was told today that the government, a person of the Indonesia government uh, just assigned, uh, assigned that the public bureaucrats and the public institutions are allowed to use uh, public corporate credit card, which will lower, I believe, the, the bribery issue. So uh, through Chambangni's system, uh, I believe that uh, the current Indonesian government's corruption will decrease. Next, please. And as you can see from this uh, graph, uh, the most corrupted part, not corrupted part, but the, the most corruption occurring is in uh, municipal government, uh, followed by provincial government. And my research is on uh, provincial government. There are too many uh, municipal governments in Indonesia, so it is uh, practically impossible to uh, investigate uh, local government, municipal local governments one by one. So I think that uh, provincial government is a very good uh, stepping point to bridge between central government and local government in order to implement uh, e audit system. So we are focusing on a provincial government. Next, please. Uh, well, this is the distinction between BPKP and BPK, and, and I believe the, all the audience already uh, understand the difference. So I, I want to skip this part. Next, the next. So this is the uh, basic uh, Chambang NIST system. Well, Chambang NIST system is not a complicated uh, infrastructure. It is a simple integration of all different data. So basically, Chambang NIST system integrates uh, data from central government, uh, uh, a private sector, including bank and a credit card company, uh, along with uh, local government data, including local tax, uh, let me see, uh, local tax, uh, income tax, and so on, uh, written on the right hand side of the slide. And by integrating data, they cross check. And if there is uh, any mismatching, then this system alerts bureaucrats to handle that mismatch. By uh, checking and handling the mismatching of the data, the Chambangni system can fix any wrongdoing or any administrative errors in advance so that bureaucrats can uh, manage and fix any errors before things get worse. Next, please. So in order to run this Chambangni system, because there are too many data and uh, basically uh, this system cannot check all the mismatching. So the government um, pointed around 90 uh, mostly frequent, uh, most frequently happening scenarios. So this system runs based on scenarios. So what I have done with uh, my counterpart, uh, Dr. Kiswanto, uh, was to read all the, pos all the 90, uh, around 90 scenarios from Korean government and screened uh, and, and selected that can be applicable 
to Indonesian uh, government. Next, please. So this is one example of how the Chonbengli system works. So there is uh, a data about uh, property tax. So there is a tax officers who impose tax on property. And there's another division officials uh, dealing with uh, building registration. So say uh, a person built or a company built a building and the public officials registered that building uh, information. But that data, previously that data was not shared with um, tax officials. So tax officials did not, uh, sometimes uh, wrongfully, uh, did not uh, impose tax on new building. But now they are cross-checked through data. And if any tax was not imposed to newly uh, built building, or any taxes are wrongfully imposed to building which is no longer registered, this system uh, discovered that errors and let bureaucrats uh, fix that errors. Next, please. Uh, so, uh, as I said, with uh, my counterpart, uh, Dr. Kiswanto, we reviewed all 90 uh, Korean scenarios and selected about 33 uh, scenarios. Uh, so these, is, these are the scenarios that can be applicable to uh, Indonesian government. And this also includes uh, scenarios regarding wrongfully using a uh, public corporate car. So I'm not going to uh, explain one by one uh, at this point, but uh, please uh, uh, read the, uh, refer to the slide if necessary. Next, please. Next, please. Next. So these are all the scenarios that we are found. Uh, we found, and uh, we interviewed local bureaucrats and local. Uh, auditors from provincial governments, and we found that um, all auditors agree that the importance and necessity of EOD system, such as Chongbengli system. And we found four barriers to implement Chongbengli system in pro provincial government. One, some data are not digitalized, so they still manage uh, document manually. So in order to cross-check uh, information, the data should be digitalized. But at this point, some data are not digitalized. That's one barrier. Second barrier is that uh, many provincial governments suffer from poor internet connection. So Chongbengli system needs to integrate data from different sources. So in order to integrate uh, data from different sources, internet connection is precondition and very important prerequisite. And, and third barrier is that uh, there are different financial management platforms across institution. Well, as uh, Mr. Dadang said, uh, BPKP and uh, Minister of Home Affairs just agreed to develop new system, but still uh, there are platforms by Minister of Information and Communications, Inform Ministry of Finance, and so on. So it is important to uh, overcome barriers uh, such as different financial management platform from different ministries. Next, please. So here are our four policy implementation. One, digitalizing relevant data. Second, uh, developing infrastructure such as uh, internet connection. So in order to develop infrastructure, it cannot be done right away. So. Uh, the government needs to secure uh, some amount of budget annually to gradually improve internet connection across the country. Next, please. The third policy implication is to develop uh, more scenarios. Current authority scenarios are from Korean case. So we reviewed Korean case and selected that can be applicable to uh, Indonesian context, but there must be other scenarios uh, which is unique uh, and specific to Indonesian context. So that's the next step that uh, maybe BPKP need to uh, uh, develop. And the last one, but not least, uh, BPKP led uh, collaboration with relevant institutions. So as Mr. Dadang said, it's a very big step to collaborate between BPKP and Ministry of Home Affairs. 
that is, uh, in fact, my major is collaboration and networking, and I know that it's very hard to make independent organization to collaborate, but you made one, and that's a starting point. And I want BPKP to take initiative to uh, integrate data from different sources as well as collaborating with other uh, independent institutions from uh, central government and local government. That's all the uh, outcome of our research. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for Professor Liu for the uh, topic number one. As I expected, he's a number one in this field in Korea. And he has shared Korea's experience, particularly on the Changdengi system and the development scenario in the future. Okay, let's move on to the topic number two. Aisa Kim is responsible for topic number two. So are you with us, Aisa? Yes, I am. Hello. Okay, before starting your presentations, please say hello to our Indonesian colleagues. Uh, hello, everyone. Um... I apologize for not being there. I really looked forward to, to being there. Um, unfortunately, I was in the hospital until yesterday uh, and um, I was not able to attend, uh, but I would really uh, like to have been there. And I remember again, the, the library cafe uh, that we were at last time. And there was a very good event last time. And <laughs> I actually remember that, but I apologize for not being uh, there this time. Uh, would it be possible to, sh to allow me uh, authorization for sharing my screen? Uh, I don't have the authorization to share my screen at the moment. Okay, it's working now. Um, Uh, can everybody see the screen? Okay, uh, so let me um, start with my presentation. Uh, topic two is related in terms of the comparative analysis between uh, PPK's audit systems and Korea's electronic audit system. Uh, with the support of Ms. Ruri Hanasari uh, and myself, we were responsible for topic two. Uh, topic two uh, currently has uh, three sections. Um, instead of uh, repeating the, the content that was presented in the, uh, the midterm, uh, so I um, skipped that part and I started with a very brief summary of the current status and challenges in terms of uh, what is the current status and challenges. I'd like to start the presentation by just taking one minute to think about what is the main challenge that PPKP has right now uh, in terms of the integrated auditive systems. Uh, and I hope you remember that we had this discussion previously last time uh, with the interviews with the various stakeholders, with the, uh, the different organizations, uh, with the local governments online. Uh, and one of the things I think we realized is that the problem is or the main challenge is we are trying to do an integrated audit of unintegrated components or different components that they themselves are not integrated. So here is the problem, the processes, the system, the data and the software, uh, these components themselves are not aligned to the audit mechanism. And so there is the issue of challenge, this is the challenge of developing a system or um, a specific way to audit to overcome these unintegrated components. Uh, and this is where the focus of my presentation will be. If you can come back to this one main challenge of how can we use systems and relevant technologies to actually integrate, to have an integrated audit of these unintegrated components. So currently uh, BPKP has already taking some proactive measures. For example, this slide shows uh, the integration process of uh, local, local procurement. Uh, it gathers data collection, it has the activities from the different organizations, 
uh, related to from the different planning activities in the government agencies, covering the procurement processes, the reporting evaluation systems, uh, the business and investment information systems. Uh, and it requires the inter integration of the different types of systems, uh, as well as the different types of information. So there's actually some uh, active, proactive activities that are ongoing to address this plan, uh, to, to address this challenge that we have already been addressing. However, we realize that there are still some issues uh, in terms of different codes that have not been integrated, uh, whether there are not some information that is not available from different systems, and some local content is not available in the contract systems. So when you look or when you address the current integration activities, you can see that there are some gaps uh, in the activities, despite the proactive efforts of all these integration activities. Now, that is not to say these activities are not well done. Uh, of course, they are very well um, done, but we're trying to see what is the way we can improve these types of activities from a systematic point of view um, for the next steps. So instead of going through the, the challenges that we addressed, uh, just to give a quick summary, uh, these are some of the areas that were identified that needed improvement, improvement in terms of the integration and application of technologies, uh, the application of data modeling, and also new skills that are, will allow you to use this data modeling, uh, the actual data analysis and reporting, when you receive the data, how you can analyze it and make conclusions from the data. Other control functions, some supervision and control functions. This was something that was mentioned in the new system, the supervisory uh, functions, as well as uh, whether or not it's necessary to ex expand the scope uh, in terms of the FMIS and CACM. Uh, there was the mention of the fraud detection as well as the forensic capacities or capabilities. Uh, there's also some support for the, the planning agenda overall. We're talking about online planning, not, on, not only uh, coordinated planning. Also the terms of business process improvement and digitalization. Uh, in some of the local governments, there are issues with digitalization of data and there's a gap between the central and some of the local governments uh, and some organizations, as well as governance of this integration and change management overall. So there's a whole shopping list of areas that need improvement. Uh, and unfortunately, this uh, knowledge sharing program, my topic will not be able to address all of these, but we'll try to address them in different groups. So looking at the challenges that were identified, we're thinking, what are some good and best practice that BPKP can incorporate in the current development activities? And since you participated in the uh, interviews and the analysis, I think that you understand some of the key points that we are uh, discussing yourselves during the interviews that we they discussed. So having that as the background, uh, I tried to find some Korean experiences that would provide some examples. The first one is the basic uh, case study. This was considered an as-was case some during the initial stages of development. Uh, and this is used not to, as a copy and paste type of, type of model, but for you to look as a reference. There are a couple of points that, uh, that I'd like to mention in, in this case study, where there was the separation of different types of systems, uh, the audit management system, the data collection system, the overall portal that coordinated all these activities, but there's also this knowledge management type of system, as well as a research support system. Uh, they sometimes can be combined into one system as well, in terms of research support of uh, these activities. So here you can see that in the initial development stages of Korea's e-audit system, there was this understanding of the different components that was necessary in developing the ecosystem. Uh, together with these basic four main basic systems, uh, one of the key areas that the Korean government applied was the business process reengineering. In order to have the application of this system, to have this optimal and ideal system, they needed also to change and improve uh, the current business processes and not just to have the systems mirror the existing processes because basically uh, that would not be the way to optimize the, 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 the current processes. If you have a wrong or incorrect process, it does not make sense to automate it or to make it faster. You're trying to see what is the best process you can have 
and then focus on, on that and developing the systems. So the first case that was presented in the report and like that I'm sharing with you is in terms of developing the stages, what are the main components that you're thinking about? Uh, how will the different components work with each, other, with, with each other? And you can sort of see the different components and how they interact with each other in the first case study. The second one I wanted to address because this is very similar to the current situation in BPKP. Uh, it is almost identical. Basically, the organization, the audit organization needs to address the current changes, the current needs in the current situation. And this is an example uh, from Korea. Uh, there may be some small changes in the difference of mandates that the organization's hands, the BPKP has. Uh, but if you look, uh, there are many similarities in terms of the requirements and, and how the Korean, the Korean audit system re responded to these requirements. The first one in, is in terms of the increased audit scope. Uh, not only are we talking about basic audit, but we're also increasing this to include performance or supervi supervisionary functions, IT audits, uh, governance audits. And in order to increase the scope, there needs to be increased allocation of resources to respond to this increase of scope. So that's the first point of the Korean case. The second one is related to the complexity. Now there is more complication, more information. Uh, this information cannot be managed just by the current staff that are available. So now we're talking about how can we increase the capacities uh, through IT smart IT systems uh, that can support or greatly improve the capacities of the staff, uh, whether they're supporting the data analysis, uh, just the forensics or other types of activities to allow this complex audit to be taken. The third one is in terms of changing the audit processes. There are some processes, traditional processes that are changing, not only within uh, specific countries, but in overall in general. Instead of uh, specific areas, now there is this continuous type of audit uh, and the shift not only turns from paper audit to IT-based audit. Uh, in terms, including the monitoring uh, of a uh, around the clock monitoring system. And I understand that this is also another requirement that you are looking at. So looking at these changes, and this is to present the scene in terms of what is necessary, the resources, uh, some smart IC systems that can increase the capacities, as well as some continuous monitoring system, just to give a summary of the main points. The third example that I'd like to give is in terms of application of new technologies. Now, I'm not saying that this technology should be applied directly. Uh, I would actually like to recommend this type of activity. In addition to a general rule-based detection system, such as the Chongbaek new system that was uh, introduced in the first topic, there is additional activities that can be done in addition or in parallel to the, original, the traditional types of um, scenarios, based systems, or other areas. Uh, there can also be some statistics, real-time statistic-based analysis. You can apply new technology, AI technologies uh, to, for example, the automatic generation of scenarios based on risk models or different types of areas. So we're talking about the possibility of adding new technologies in addition to or on top of these types of activities. And these are some things, these are some considerations that BPKP may be looking at in terms of what are the next steps for developing uh, the systems. So to provide, a, while providing these case studies as examples on uh, what, are some, what are some of the challenges, uh, what are some of the challenges and the ways to address them, uh, I drafted a very simple uh, com comparison table just to say, share that, just to show you that the situation is not exactly the same. Uh, and that we are not looking at the same types of activities uh, at different points of time. Uh, in terms of integration activities, uh, there, are some, there are some areas of improvement. For example, the data sharing mechanism is carried out by uh, MOUs rather than one integrated uh, national uh, interoperability, interoperability sharing data framework. But I understand that there are ongoing activities, for, for example, in, through SATU data, data to have this one data of all the necessary um, activities, their ongoing activities. Also the issue in terms of uh, data modeling and new skills, uh, there's a challenge of the individual developments, uh, technologies. Uh, there, for me, it is very clear 
that uh, Indonesia needs to apply these smart mobile technologies to address these geospatial limitation or geographical challenges. Uh, for example, in terms of channel and integration functions that allow different methods of connecting to the system, whether you're a staff member or you're a, a, a simple user of the system. In terms of forensic capacities, this is also very similar to the government Korean. It was not available at the beginning stages. It was added later at the stages. So this is something that is very similar to the situation in Korea. In terms of the coordination, there was the centralized and digitalized coordination where this is not yet digitalized at the moment. Um, it is done through the internal auditor coordination forum. In terms of knowledge management, this is one area that I'd like to highlight or to emphasize. Uh, there is some limited uh, vendor-based support, but there's no, with no corp cooperation between the government organizations. So this is one area that I'd like to focus on. Uh, also, there is some differences in the governance, the differences in the processes, and the difference in the ERP and different systems. So I'm just saying this not to say that uh, even Indonesia is before or behind or in front of Korea. It's just to say that there are differences that needs to be taken into context while we're making these, in, in these um, recommendations for the next steps. So putting all of these things together, uh, I don't want to take too much time, uh, putting all of these things together, there, um, I wanted to share one point. Uh, look, starting from what are the main problems that uh, BPKPS, uh, how are you trying to address them? What are some similar problems that Korea has? And what are some of the systems that Korea developed in order to address these problems? And based on this sort of flow of thoughts, uh, I'd like to present uh, three sets of recommendations. Going back to the summary of the different challenges, I'd like to group these into three basic uh, key areas of recommendations to focus on. When we're talking about integration, when we're talking about expanding the scope of activities, or uh, the business process improvement or integration governance. Uh, I'm talking about the recommendation for the need of a development of an integration framework. Instead of trying to integrate one activity, why don't we start to think about an overall integration framework, uh, a audit integration framework, as, as you can think about, that can be applied to any situation or all the situations that you're looking at. The second point I'd like to mention is what are the right technologies to address the requirements? What are some specific technologies that you should be looking into? And the third point is in terms of addressing the capacity gaps. And I think this is one important point that was identified during the interviews and discussions, especially in the context of the different levels of capacities within, between the central and among the different types of the different local governments. So three key areas of recommendations to focus on. The first was in terms of the integration framework. To respond to change and apply these new technologies, it's clear that all of this information needs to be gathered into one place. Uh, when we talked about the first initial project problem of uh, integrated audits of unintegrated components, well, the first step is to see what is the way we can actually integrate the components. And that is related, for example, the application of the business process reengineering that if that is possible currently. So the processes that can be integrated together or optimized, that should be done. Uh, the second one is in terms of the systems integration. And I think that this is important because this is not only a um, ministry or organizational specific activity, it is a nationwide activity. And there is the need to develop this uh, audit enterprise architecture, not just following the current Indonesian government activities, but I think it is very important that uh, BPKP uh, voice the need or, or the requirements of the audit activities and have this included in the overall national enterprise ar architecture. And this is why I brought up the term of an audit enterprise uh, architecture. And finally, in terms of the realistic or the real life application of this integration, the solution that we are recommendation is based on the platform-based systems and great integration. And this is actually aligned with the current, the current government's, Korean government's activities in terms of platform-based platform uh, services. To give one example uh, from the Korean Board of Audit and Inspection, to have all of the information available 
these are the questions that you're looking at. First of all, what is the information that is needed internally, externally? Where is this information available? How can I get this information? And how can I gather this information into one system where the system can do some analysis and these activities? Uh, here is the example of the, um, the data that is gathered into a platform system, platform based system. Uh, very briefly, the reason why a platform is important is because you can add other components on top of a, a platform and it can be reused by the other different areas, uh, other different organizations and departments that need to do these different types of activities. Instead of the different organizations gathering the necessary data, if all of the data is gathered and available in one location, then all of the users are able to use this information. So this is one, one example of uh, development of a platform-based systems integration. The second set of recommendations in terms of the regional technologies and new technologies. So in terms of the actual technologies, there's a recommendation in terms of uh, the mobile and offline usage support systems, systems that can be used remotely, but also in areas without internet connectivity. And uh, obviously, as the, the first, in the first topic, there was a recommendation of the development of infrastructure. This is the final recommendation, or this is the correct recommendation. But in the meanwhile, or in the interim, you are trying to see what is the best way or what is also even the best infrastructure to develop. There can be some sort of different type of uh, offline infra um, support while the infrastructure is being developed to be able to have this available in all of the geographical regions. There's also the challenge in terms of when you're looking at these technologies, instead of just applying, there's always this technology risk. So to reduce this risk, there's different ways you can address this, whether you're breaking up into different phases, uh, having the separate development as pilots, but also when you have the application of the technologies, it's also important to fine tune it and to make sure that these technologies, you're using all of the, the technologies to the full benefit. Let me just give one example very quickly. If suddenly, oh, we're going to try to use some open data technologies and have all the data available in an open way so that it's available to everybody, to all the governments. If you have this type of technology application, you have the additional risks. What happens if there is some problem with some security issues and suddenly this information is leaked into the public? This can be a very serious problem. And obviously as a government financial organization, we do not want to have this type of activities. So when we are thinking about this type of application of technologies, we are always in consideration of these technology risks. Um, and this is the second point of recommendations. One example that I'm talking about is related to uh, some trend. This is a general trend for channel uh, integrated com um, communication channels. Uh, you have social media, internet, cell phones, general cell phones in, in terms of online chat, you have these video calls. Um, Basically, these days, the trend is towards an integrated citizen experience or integrated uh, government experience where all channels provide the same information in the same way uh, for these activities. And I'm bringing this as an example uh, for some technologies that you might be interested in when you're trying to see what is the best way to connect the different uh, local governments, the different users in different areas with different requirements. And you can think about developing a integrated communication channel as a way to gather this information, but not, an, not only in terms of uh, information, but also in terms of gathering data. This is the reason why I gave this example. When you are gathering data, all of these different channels can be considered different uh, venues or different channels of uh, gathering information. The third and final set of recommendations are related to capacity gaps. Uh, so this is a very straightforward recommendation. Uh, to succeed, you basically need to have all the users using the new systems properly. And to help that, uh, the basic recommendation is to actually embed the capacity support that is sustainable. And one of the ways to make this sustainable is to have some sort of peer-to-peer -peer support model where other users can support other users, uh, as well as different training models and, for example, different subsystems that are developed within the systems. Uh, and again, um, this is uh, related to not only to this, but uh, BPKP systems in general, but also the initial assessment of what are the training requirements during the system development phase. 
So when you're making the system develop or you're, which you're currently in the systems development phase and improving the system, uh, during this phase, uh, an under assessment, assessment of the training requirements would be very helpful in understanding how should the training systems or training models be set up so that a new person who has access to this information be able to use this information. So this is an example of a, a basic integrated knowledge management system uh, that anybody who has any um, information would be very um, uh, comfortable looking at. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of points uh, that basically you can integrate the different layers into a knowledge portal uh, that can connect sort of the business applications in terms of, as well as the individuals. So that you, uh, this allows the individuals to have access to how can I do my business activities, but also it provides a general knowledge map or repository of all of the requirements of the different types of systems and these types of activities. So this is one recommendation that I'd like to really highlight in the sense that it's a realistic and something that uh, I don't think many people would disagree uh, uh, to. Uh, but if you have this in an, in an embedded way, so that during the development, all of this information is actually included in the system so that the users can access the help files and other areas, but also provide other users in other areas with this type of help. Uh, I think this would be a very helpful recommendation in the sense of improving the sustainability of the different activities. So this is the last page of my uh, slide. Uh, thank you. Let me conclude my presentation here. Thank you. Thank you. We just listened to a new technology which uh, is applicable for BBKP EOD system. Thank you, Aisa. And stay with us. And uh, thank you for your patience. This is the last topic done by President Zhang at the moment. So we are going to open the video clip. Is is 13 minutes long. Am I right, Sian? Yes. So please. Today, 자, 주제 3은 이미 발표를 했, 어, 하, 여러분이 내용을 잘 알고 있는, 아시는 내용이기 때문에 중간 보고에 없었던 내용 위주로 어, 발표를 하겠습니다. 자, 그 한국의 이 감사 시스템입니다. 치, 1970년대 이후 국가 전상망이 어, 발달하고 2000년 이후 전자정부가 출범하면서 행정 환경이 변화하였고 이에 따라서 감사원의 감사 방식에도 변화가 필요하게 되었습니다. 그 변화가 바로 감사원의 시스템 감사인데 시스템 감사의 일환으로 만들어진 이 감사 시스템은 어, 한국 정부의 효율적 운영 방식으로 개혁이 진행됐고 그, 감, 그 개혁에 의해서 감사원의 감사 기조의 변화와 어, 관련되어 있습니다. 자, 한국의 감사 시스템의 목적은 이 감사 시스템의 목적은 전자시대와 국가개혁의 환경 환경에서 새로운 감사 방식이 바로 이 테이블에 보는 바와 같이 도입이 된 것입니다. 한국의 이 감사 시스템과 관련 정책들은 어, 일찍이 1970년대부터 진행됐습니다. 대한민국의 행정전산화와 어, 전, 전자정부의 이행과 연동되어서 발전해 왔습니다. 전자정부의 도입과 발전은 2004년 구축되어 고도화 및 개발 과정을 거듭하고 있는 이 감사 시스템의 기반이 되었습니다. 보시는 표와 같이 1978년도 이후로 시기별로 행정전산화, 전자정부, 이 감사 시스템의 순서대로 확인하여 법제까지 우리가 살펴볼 수 있습니다. 
어, 표에 잘 나와 있죠. 78, 86, 87, 93, 95년, 96년도까지. 2000년 이후에는 어, 감사원은 감사 정부나 어, 정보나 감사 지식을 축적하는 생산적 감사, 그리고 자료들을 수집 분석하는 예방 감사, 그리고 시스템 구축을 통한 투명한 열린 감사를 어, 추구하게 되었습니다. 보이시죠? 네. 표와 같이 어, 순서대로 진행이 되었습니다. 행정안전부는 2005년부터 2008년까지 어, 행정정보공동이용을 위한 구축사업을 3차례에 걸쳐서 시행했고 이후 2009년부터 2011년까지 고도화 사업을 3차례에 걸쳐서 시행하였습니다. 이 감사 시스템과 어, 법제화는 어, 제도적 기반을 마련하기 감사원이 전자 시, 감사 시스템을 성공적으로 활용하기 위해서 시스템 구축을 위한 제도적 기반을 마련하는 것이 어, 선행되었습니다. 어, 특히 어, 공공 데이터를 어, 수집 축적하는 것뿐만 아니라 이를 제공하는 것도 필요했기 때문이죠. 이를 위해서는 단순히 지방자치단체나 공공기관 간의 협력이 아닌 법률에 기반하여 데이터를 어, 공유하고 운영해야 됐습니다. 역시 이 표를 보시면 중요한 어, 사항들이 나와 있습니다. 1986년에 전산망 보급 확장과 이용 촉진에 관한 법률, 1998년에 행정정보공동이용에 관한 규정, 2001년 전자정보법 등 어, 이것들이 어, 순서대로 제정됐고 각 시스템을 지속적으로 개발하고 고도화하였습니다. 2014년도에 새로운 공공감사정보시스템인 PAIS가 도입되었고 이것이 예산관리시스템인 D-Brain, 지방재정시스템인 E-Hojo, 교육재정시스템인 e e d u f i n e 를 연계한 차세대 E-감사시스템을 운영하였고 2015년 이후 차세대 E-감사시스템을 오아시스로 개칭하여 운영 중에 있습니다. 2016년에는 각 지자체들의 행정정보와 다른 기관 간 데이터를 결합 분석할 수 있도록 공공 빅데이터 표준 분석 모델을 구축하고 보급하였습니다. 2017년도는 전자관리 시스템을 감사원에 도입하여 감사 업무를 효율적으로 어, 온라인으로 처리하고 또 문서 및 자료를 전자적으로 축적 관리하는 업무 시스템을 구축하고 시행했습니다. 자, 이 심다, 자카르테 심다 사례는 이미 중간 보급 때 일별할 내용이므로 설명을 생략하고 이 자료로서 대체하도록 하겠습니다. 현재 어, 심다의 넥스 g 에서 FMIS로 시스템 변환 중에 있습니다. 어, 중요한 것은 인도네시아 정부는 2020년 어, 심다 넥스 g 단계를 통해 전자기반 정보 시스템 에 관한 대통령 규정 2018년 95호를 시행하였습니다. 이것이 이제 한국과 비교하면 어, 전자정부 출범인 2001년 이전 이미 국가 전상망 작업을 위한 한국의 노력이 거의 30년 동안 진행된 데 비해서 인도네시아는 상당히 압축된 단계를 거쳐왔으며 이를 감안하여 시스템 발전을 위한 계획을 보다 다각적 측면으로 구체화할 필요가 있습니다. 또한 인도네시아의 이 감사 시스템의 법제 기반은 부처별 규정이나 대통령 영어만으로 규율된다는 점도 우리가 확인할 수 있습니다. 보시는 바와 같이 심다가 FMIS로 어, 전환되는 어, 과정입니다. 2022년도에 이제 FMIS를 통해 FMIS 사용자가 입력한 데이터들은 각 지방정부가 소유하고 있, 있습니다. 하지만 전자간사 시스템을 위해서 BBKP가 BPKP가 이에 대한 접근과 공유가 가능하게 할 계획입니다. 2019년도에 어, 대통령령 39호를 통해서 데, 데이터 활용 기반을 마련해서 정부기관의 역할을 명확히 했습니다. 인도네시아는 광대형망 계획, 어, 전자정부 시스템의 도입, 그리고 데이터 공유, 관련된 정책까지 상당히 짧은 기간 동안에 많은 업적을 이루었습니다. 시스템의 변화와 어, 통합, 공, 정보 공유를 통한 어, 전자정보의 운용, 이 감사 시스템의 도입이 어, 현재로서는 어, 추진 중에 있습니다. 
어, 그래서 중요한 것이 이제 법적 메커니즘과 그 한계를 지적할 수가 있습니다. BBKP는 심다에서 데이터의 수집, 유지, 처리, 활용하고는 있습니다. 하지만 BPKP가 심다를 통한 각각의 지방 정부들의 데이터의 사용을 명시적으로 요구할 수 있는 기술적 법적 근거가 없다는 것이 바로 한계입니다. 이에 통합 서버를 통해서 심다 데이터는 BPKP에서 합법적으로 액세스하고 사용할 수 있는 국가 감독 데이터 아키텍처에 포함되어야 합니다. 현행 FMIS로 수집된 데이터의 활용도를 높이기 위해서는 근거법 내지 규정의 마련이 시급한 것입니다. 데이터 접근 용이성과 그 범위를 확대하기 위해서 내부 감사 기관의 활동에 관한 규정도 부재된 상태입니다. 자, 그래서 결론을 하나하나 내리겠습니다. 제일 중요한 것이 선제적 법률과 규정입니다. 한국은 전자정보 수립 이후에도 전자정보를 통한 행정정보의 이용을 용이하기 위해서 2000년부터 2014년도까지 다섯 차례 개정을 통해서 전자정보법을 보완하였습니다. 또한 2010년 이후에는 공공감사에 관한 법률을 제정하여 체계적인 전자감사 제도의 기반을 마련하였습니다. BPKP의 지방정보 공공 데이터베이스에 대한 접근, 수집, 사용 및 감시, 감사하는 권한을 법적 또는 규정에 의해서 강화할 필요가 있습니다. BPKP가 데이터를 통합할 수 있는 프로그램을 주도할 필요가 있고 이를 위한 직원 교육을 개설할 필요가 있습니다. 즉 인도네시아 전자정보 시스템에 대한 법률 제정이 반드시 필요하다는 이야기입니다. 한국의 경우 전산화부터 전자정보까지 근거법들이 단계적으로 제정되었음을 바로 이 표에 같이 우리가 압축적으로 확인할 수가 있습니다. 어, 하위법과 하위 규정이 이제 필요한데요. 전자정보를 효과적으로 운영할 수 있는 실무적으로 구체화된 바로 하위 법령이나 하위 규정이 필요합니다. 행정정보 공유의 확대와 이를 통한 감사, 공공감사에 대한 법률 제정이 필요한 것이죠. 한국은 공공감사법, 공공데이터의 제공 및 활성화에 대한 법률이 제정되었음을 바로 이 테이블 통해서 확인할 수 있습니다. BPKP도 역시 FMIS를 통한 전자감사 시스템을 효율적으로 운영하기 위해서는 중앙행정기관, 지방자치단체, 공공기관의 자체 감사활동과 감사활동 시스템 운영에 관한 법적 근거 마련이 선행되어야 할 것입니다. 정책 제안입니다. 인도네시아에서는 전자감사 시스템의 확보 및 고도와 함께 시행해야 할 법적 근거가 미비한 것으로 현재 판단되고 있습니다. 법적 근거가 없으면 시스템이 존재해도 제대로 운영하는 것에 한계가 있습니다. 따라서 현내 전자감사 인프라에서 전자정보를 통한 행정정보의 공동 활용 및 활용을 위한 일반 법규나 지침을 마련할 것을 권고합니다. 한국의 경우 상당히 오랜 기간 준비된 근거법과 규정이 이 감사 시스템과 그 주변 인프라 스트럭처의 역할이 되는 시스템에 강력한 지지 기반이 되었음을 확인하였습니다. 인도네시아는 전자감사 시스템의 그리고 기반 시스템들의 개발뿐만 아니라 이들을 지속적으로 운영할 수 있는 법적 제도적 기반 환경을 마련을 위해서 지속적인 노력이 동시에 필요합니다. 이를 위해서 한국의 제도를 국가 전상만 보급해서 최근까지 계획, 법률, 규정, 기반 시스템들 그리고 감사 시스템까지 확인할 필요가 있습니다. 단계적으로 확인하는 거죠. 첫 번째는 전자정보법, 어, SPD를 활성화를 위한 전자정보법 제정이 선행되어야 됩니다. 다음 단계는 BPKP 감사정보 시스템을 구축하고 운영에 관한 인가, 즉 공공감사에 관한 법률이 제정되어야 됩니다. 그리고 FMIS 활성화를 위한 자체 감사 어, 관련 감사 기준 및 지침이 마련되어야 됩니다. 이것이 즉 공공감사에 관한 법률입니다. 이렇게 전자정보법, 공공감사에 관한 법률, 공공감사에 관한 법률이 순차적으로 진행되어야 합니다. 그리고 SPBB 및 FMIS 활성화를 위한 공공데이터의 관리 제공을 위한 제도적 기반이 마련되어야 됩니다. 이것은 공공데이터의 제공 및 이용 활성화 관한 법률입니다. 그 후에는 SPB, FMIS 활성화를 위한 데이터 통합 및 공유를 위한 공공이용 시스템 구축 및 운영 기준이 마련되어야 됩니다. 이는 
바로 행정정보 공동이용 지침입니다. 그러면서 SPB의 행정정보 기준에 따른 행정정보의 공동이용 현황에 관한 정보 고시가 작성되어야 됩니다. 이것이 바로 어, 한국식의 이제 행정안전부 고시죠. 공동이용 대상 행정정보 현황 공시, 공시입니다. 아, 그러고 나서 이제 SPB의 FMIS 판에 데이터 연계 활성화 및 데이터 통합 관리에 관한 법률 마련을 위한 데이터 기반 관리가 고도화 되어야 됩니다. 이것이 바로 데이터 기반 행정 활성화에 관한 법률 제정입니다. 이것이 제가 인도네시아 BBKP에 제정, 어, 제안하는 어, 법률 과정입니다. 어, 그동안 어, 어떻게 보면 짧으면 짧다고 하지만 굉장히 오랜 시간 동안에 인도네시아 BPKP와의 나누었던 소중했던 그리고 귀중했던 추억을 소중하게 여기면서 여러분께 작별 인사를 드리겠습니다. 감사합니다. 음. I'm Uh, we, are, we are able to have a Q&A session. From, uh, we are going to listen to uh, questions or comments, particularly number two, uh, number one, number two subtopics. So for the uh, subtopic number three, uh, you can send us an email or a message we have been to Korea, and we can get answers from Professor Zhang and share with you in the future. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, all of you. Uh, first of all, uh, we are very appreciate uh, the result of uh, your uh, research. Uh, fully thank for your conclusion, your recommendation. We do realize that. Our uh, big problem, big problem is uh, the in, unintegrated data. Yeah, uh, our uh, Ministry of uh, Finance said that uh, government of Indonesia had uh, has built more than 2,000 <laughs> information system <laughs> that doesn't uh, integrate each other. Uh, that's really our uh, uh, our problem, and uh, uh, maybe Indonesia uh, uh, decentralization of Indonesia is uh, unique, uh, maybe different uh, from an another country. Uh, in, in Indonesia, we have uh, uh, one financial statement of central government. We end. 542 financial statement of local government and 74,000 and uh, more than 900 uh, financial statement of villages. Yeah, and that's uh, 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 presented uh, separately. We don't have uh, the financial the financial statement of Indonesia yet. So if you ask me how uh, how much is the asset of Indonesia, we don't we don't, we don't know because uh, there are uh, many financial statement of uh, government uh, that not uh, uh, integrated. Uh, uh, what you have uh, uh, conclusion and recommendation is about uh, local government is. Uh, 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 advantage for us, and we will uh, uh, make a follow up of it. Yeah, and and, and of course, and and uh, it is uh, really uh, part of our uh, uh, plan. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, Maybe we can uh, give you a bigger challenge if you uh, uh, continue for the next project. Yeah, is to integrate 
the uh, 74,900 villages system. Uh, if uh, for uh, 400 and uh, uh, 542 and local government, we 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 have made a uh, SIMDA for uh, the, the the information system for for that local government. Uh, for uh, villages, we have also made a uh, uh, system that called SISKEUDES uh, 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 villages financial. Uh, system yeah financial system of villages uh, so uh, that's um, uh, uh, the bigger the bigger challenge if you uh, if you want to have a uh, uh, research uh, research in in next uh, project <laughs> yeah uh, and uh, that uh, 74 uh, thousand fillets is uh, 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 apa, tersebar is spread from uh, west to east yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from Sabang to Merauke yeah uh, in uh, uh, millions uh, islands yeah uh, maybe that's uh, that's a, a, a big uh, a big challenge in the future Uh, uh, that's also in our uh, plan to make an integrated uh, of uh, that system, but uh, uh, we uh, it it of course it it takes time, and uh, we agree that uh, you said that uh, the one uh, magic words is willingness, right? If we have a willingness. It, it, uh, uh, What what whatever is that will will be will work yeah will 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 happen. Uh, I think that's uh, from me. Uh, actually, thank you very much for your uh, uh, research uh, result and uh, your conclusion and uh, recommendation. And uh, we hopefully uh, we can yeah implement it and we can. Meet you next in Korea. <laughs> See you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bilio. Uh, any other good words, comments, or questions? Is um. Okay, thank you very much for the. Uh, it's very interesting presentation about this research. I just want to maybe ask something to you, maybe as part of the your uh, research results. Uh, based on your research, result, told us that uh, the problem is about system integration and and about regulation. Of course, there may be still a lack of our. system but i want to know maybe based on your uh, experience in korea maybe uh, how about uh, how about uh, for for uh, deal with the people as a human as part of system especially about the culture uh, of the organization based on the people uh, based people characteristic because i think sometimes uh, we have uh, deal with the problem about the implementation of the integration system where while we have problem about maybe something uh, about culture matter some maybe uh, like uh, resistant to change something like that thank you very much oh maybe uh, to the, the yes yeah for, for you thank you very much really difficult to change culture and I had a very uh, constructive 
uh, debate and discussion with my colleague a few weeks ago about the role of the culture and every effort to change culture failed because it is accumulated for a long time. So it controls people. The culture is institu institutionalized in the organization. So at first, people make the culture, but once culture is established, it changes people. So uh, we cannot change culture. So we have to accept culture as a given condition. Right. So uh, if we cannot change culture, then what can be done? Um, the answer may be, you may want to make use of the culture. So given that culture, say, um, um, it's a difficult question, so I don't have the right answer at this moment, but the system or the for instance, EOD system is implemented and that will change people's behavior. Uh, even if uh, still people behave, people's behavior will be influenced by the culture, but gradually the system changes people's uh, behavior. And that will maybe in the long, in the long run changes the culture. So. Um, there should be a strong law or policies to regulate people. Because every institution, every ministry, every organization has different culture, but once a similar or same policy is applied, they change their behavior, uh, adjusted to their culture. So given that culture, they behave differently based on the policy. So. Um, that, that's my idea. I could be wrong, but that's the initial thought uh, to your question. In the past, many local governments used the different form of document. And central government cannot consolidate the various document manually, but these days, ICT and new software. Central government can collect if you uh, require. Local government should use a specific formation through ICT technology then you can collect data and analyze yeah, by IC technology and software. You can do Okay. Mm. No more questions? I would like to close, I guess. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, yes, of course. We have enough time, so yes, we would like to finish our goals, our project with Indonesia. We are gathered here to conduct KSP uh, with Indonesia 2122. And then this is the last event for the research activity. But we will have one more chance to meet each other in Korea the coming next month. Uh, just so you that you know, I'd like to inform you one very, very special thing, event of coming, uh, coming uh, September. The Korean government, the Minister of Economic Finance is organizing a uh, regional seminar, uh, ASEAN regional seminar for KSP 2122. BKDI uh, recommended this project to Minister of Economic Finance. And they selected as a model case, successful case, and uh, the Minister of Economic Finance kindly of request BPKP 
to participate in this seminar and then make a presentation to share your and our know-how in lovely city Jakarta. I think 27, yes, uh, 27, yeah, 27 in Jakarta. So please accept our invitation to this seminar. And on behalf of KDI, Korean government and the KDI, um, thank you very much. I really appreciate your strong support. Your, without your supporting, interesting, we cannot reach to here today. Um, Dr. Jin and then Mr. Dada to advisor, KDI and BBKP, and then uh, Korean expert, three expert, and then local government. Oh, shall we send a big hand to local consultants? Christian? <laughs> Once again, thank you very much. Uh, for me, uh, it was very, very great honor to conduct with the DPKP. And we, even though we finished today this wonderful project with us, but our friendship will not be end of it at the moment. We have to continuous cooperation to build a relationship and then see you again very soon. Thank you.